my name's Carl and I want to share with you my top 10 survival tips. If you follow these tips, you're most likely to extract with six survival caches and not have any issues whatsoever. Try them out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So let's get right into it. Number one, it's super important to collect your mass materials first. I know you've probably got an urge to rush landmarks or to rush the helicopter crash for a quick weapon. And I understand why that's so important in PvP. But my recommendation would be hunt around for uh, three blue tools, three blue fabric. You get the blue tools from red boxes and you can get the fabric from yellow boxes as well as from any armor drops that you might get uh, from NPCs. In terms of tips where you can find tools, look in parking lots, uh, garages, roofs, uh, near scaffolding, uh, all the typical places that you would expect to find tools in the real world, you can most likely find those tools in the division. The same goes for fabric, look for the yellow boxes, look inside shops, look down back alleys, look inside houses, inside the doors, on chairs, under tables. Again, anywhere where you would expect to find clothing uh, or fabric in the real world, you're more than likely to find it in the division. My second tip is to collect at least four green tools and two weapon parts. Those four green tools are going to help you from the very start of your running survival to the very end. Uh, once you've managed to find green tools, which can be found in the same places as uh, I discussed in point number one, uh, you'll be wanting to craft yourself an extended mag and a 12 times scope. If you have enough green tools, then craft yourself another 12 times scope because uh, you'll be using these again on your main weapon and then on your sniper as you progress further deeper into the game. My third tip is to craft armor after you've crafted your virus filter. So make sure you've got your virus filter, make sure you've got your advanced virus filter because uh, I always said that will let you go uh, deeper into the dark zone, underground, uh, in contaminated areas where you're going to find extra loot, extra caches, DTEC and things like that. Um, go for your holster first um, because that will more than likely, if you haven't had one drop in the normal game, that will give you a three stat holster um, and that will boost all three of your stats. In my opinion, go for your chest next. That's going to give you uh, quite a nice armor boost. If you can go for stamina and armor, that's what I'd recommend. Uh, you could end up with a quite a, a decent toughness boost from that. Next, go for some gloves. You want to be aiming for uh, gloves that will give you a boost to your primary weapon. So assault rifle damage, SMG damage, uh, marksman rifle damage. Aim for any of the damage boosting attributes on your gloves wherever possible. Prioritize these same pieces once you're in the DZ um, or craft wherever you think your build might be lacking. Um, especially when it comes to armor. Prioritize armor. I mean... Because we're still in 1.5, armor is a massive thing. You need to prioritize armor wherever you can get it. Because it's going to give you so much mitigation from incoming damage from NPCs. My fourth tip would be pick up consumables and use them whenever you can. Um, so by consumables, I'm talking water and soda, energy bar, canned food, medicine, painkillers, first aid kits. You want to be drinking water and soda whenever you can. It boosts your vision, allowing you to see loot at the side of the road, uh, the other side of a vehicle, in a building, on a floor above, a floor below. Uh, you get the idea. It lets you see loot a lot easier than when you're either thirsty or you haven't got water. Um, so, yeah, whenever water's available, pop it. When it cools down, pop it again and just keep, keep picking it up as you go along. Energy bars and canned food. You want to make sure that you're grabbing that as often as possible. Again, um, keep it active when it's on cooldown. Work for it to come off cooldown, pop another, just to make sure that you've always got something that will allow your energy to regenerate over time uh, because you don't want to be popping med kits to refill your energy. And I'll come on to uh, why a little bit later on. Medicine and painkillers. So obviously use your medicine and painkillers to keep the virus at bay. Just use them as often as possible. Use them when you've got them. Um, the more time you can have once you've got in the DZ and while you're in the DZ, it's going to give you more time for loot. I know it sounds like a no-brainer, but as soon as you need medicine or painkillers, take them. Once you're in the DZ, uh, they're fairly plentiful. You know, they're in landmarks, they're in contaminated areas, they're next to DTEC. Uh, NPCs are dropping them when you kill them. Uh, there's no other way to stop the virus from progressing, uh, so just use them. So my fifth tip is don't use first aid kits for help. Um, use them to revive yourself. I recommend that you get the extra first aid kit pouch whenever you can because um, essentially it's going to give you three chances of life and by that I mean if you get overrun by an NPC and he puts you down so long as you've got a first aid kit you've got another chance of coming back up another important tip before you use your first aid kit is crawl away from any incoming damage incoming damage while you try to use a first aid kit will cause the same effect as someone shooting you when you try to pick up a supply drop in the DZ as you're getting shot you'll see your revive meter go down while you try to get it up while you're in your first aid kit so crawl away from any incoming damage it'll make it much easier and obviously once you're back up 
uh, you're not going to have an issue um, where you've got NPC shooting you put you straight back down. Tip number six would be to hit the DZ as early as possible. I normally try and hit it with about 50 minutes left. I avoid NPCs outside the dark zone wherever possible. There are some situations where you have got to have to get into that firefight. Fine, that's don't don't worry. You know, use your guns, use your wits, use your skills, kill the NPC, and then keep moving. And again, keep warm throughout this entire process. The the worst thing is um, being freezing uh, and then getting shot because obviously you're not going to get that health regen. And your vision's going to become worse and worse and worse. And, and that, if anything, is what ends my runs <laughs> the majority of the time, especially when you're doing like a quick run for the DZ. So once you're in the DZ, that leads us to tip number seven. So my seventh tip is to grab division tech before you grab anything else. Um, they're scattered throughout the DZ in division tech boxes. They look exactly the same as they do in the normal DZ. Uh, although it's probably worthwhile pointing out that they're not in the same location as the normal DZ. DTEC is obviously important to craft your weapons, your armor and your mods. So do a quick DTEC run before you jump into a safe house because it'll be massively beneficial once you've got a couple of pieces of DTEC and you can craft your weapons, craft your armor. Don't run through the whole DZ and clear it every bit of DTEC. Leave some for everybody else. You don't need everything, to be honest. You, know, you can get yourself 10, 12, 14 pieces of DTEC and I think you're going to be fine, especially if you're picking up consumables, uh, fabric, tools, electronics, um, as you go and collecting your DTEC. In the same manner as we had outside the DZ for the, the light zone, let's call it, um, it's important to craft weapons, armor, and then mods. So the first weapon you want to craft, in my opinion, is the custom M44. And then if you have enough weapon parts and DTEC, craft yourself a tactical ATR after that. Those two weapons are going to cover you for all types of encounters that you've got to get once you're in the dark zone, and whether that be players or whether that be NPCs. After that, craft yourself some armor. Again, in the same way you did outside the DZ, prioritize armor-rich armor, so things like your holster, your chest, your backpack, and your knees. If you can get a pair of Savage Gloves, they're going to work wonders. That extra crit chance that you're going to get to target set of cover um, is going to be so valuable because most of the NPCs in the in the dark zone at the landmarks are going to be out of cover. Once you've got all those, uh, start to craft weapon mods. So uh, maybe a crit magazine for your M44 or a crit scope for your SCR. Move that 12 times scope, that green one that we crafted way back at the start of the run, move that onto your sniper rifle. Um, if you're on console, craft a few stability mods for your assault rifle just to control the recoil uh, because obviously I play on PC and Xbox and the difference between the two when it comes to recoil and controlling weapons is, is huge. If you have any materials left, craft yourself some accuracy mods and reload mods for your sniper rifle. Those are coming really useful later on in the game where you need to take out your hunter quickly, you need to reacquire your target quickly, and you need to reload quickly. And then if you've got any extra materials left over, uh, fabric or electronics, craft yourself some stamina mods. That extra stamina, that little bit of extra toughness that it's going to give you, is going to be so important later on, especially when you're fighting your hunter or fighting other players in PvP. You can get that toughness up, uh, it's just like in uh, the rest of the division game. Toughness is going to give you that ability to first trade a little bit more than you would if you had a low toughness build. So craft stamina mods if you've got anything extra. Or if you need uh, stamina, firearms, electronics to hit some weapon talents, craft wherever your build needs it. So that leads us on to tip number eight. Hit landmarks and hit them early. Ignore everything else, they're just not worth it. Landmarks are going to give you survival caches. To hit landmarks, take down the bosses and collect survival caches. Each survival cache is going to give you four items of loot and you're allowed to extract six of these. So four times six is so 24, that's 24 items of loot that you're going to get. You normally get uh, an extra two. Uh, just for extracting. Do good to went with 32 items after the survival run, which is not bad for a run that's probably going to take you an hour, an hour and a half to complete. As well as survival caches, each of the landmarks normally give extra consumables, uh, extra medicine, extra DTEC sometimes, and of course any extra NPCs at those landmarks are also going to have the possibility to drop purple items. Um, so if you're still lacking you know, with a, a knee pad or a weapon mod or whatever it would be, you can sometimes supplement those with the purple drops that you get from those landmarks. My ninth tip is to perfect your build before you extract. So by now you should have six survival caches. You should have picked up extra materials, extra consumables uh, while you've been clearing the landmarks. Uh, you should have first aid kits ready. Any extra materials that you've got, uh, whether those be uh, just fabric, electronics, or whether those be DTEC, use it. I try and get my build so I've got between 60 and 100 DPS and then between 150 to 200 toughness. I find that's a good balance on damage that I can output and damage that I can take from hunters and their skills, whether those be turrets, sticky bombs, things like that. 
the better your build is, the easier your hunting skill is going to be. So if you can get that build perfected, you've got to benefit in a couple of areas. You've got to get more XP because you get a, um, a grading based on your gear score. You've got to have an easy hunter kill. And then if you're in PvP, it's going to give that little extra edge over other people that are extracting. Because the worst thing to happen when you're in a PvP run is you get six survival casualties, you get your extraction, uh, and then someone sat there and they just one-shot you with a sniper. So perfect your build before you extract. So my last tip, my tenth tip, is a collection of tips to help you with extraction. So you've got to remember that your extraction is going to be the last thing you do in your survival run. You want it to go perfect. Nothing worse than losing all the loot that you've just worked an hour, an hour and a half for. Um, so make sure that you extract earlier and that you're not too undergeared. I normally try and give myself around ten minutes. Uh, those ten minutes give me time to get my hunter down, uh, deal with any extra hunters that come along without dying from the virus. Put something between you and the hunter, whether that be a wall, a barrier, a car, a box, just something. Uh, that's going to stop any extra incoming damage from turrets, from, from seeker mines, from sticky bombs, from grenades. Just keep something between you and your hunter kill is going to be a lot easier. If you craft yourself a heal station, use that, keep it down. You've got to be able to revive from that heal station, you've got to be able to heal from that heal station. It's going to be a constant trick of healing throughout your extraction and throughout your hunter kill. If you crafted pulse, that's great, use it. You keep track on your hunter, keep track of any extra players that are incoming. Probably one thing to bear in mind is that if you do see extra players, you're probably going to spawn an extra hunter or two. And those weapons that we crafted, use your M44 where the hunter's at range. 12 times scope for the extra headshot damage. Aim for the head. You can normally take a hunter down in one or two M44 hits. And then use that ACR for up close with that extended mag. Again, you get close enough, you get a clear enough line of sight on that hunter. Your ACR with an extended mag is going to burn that hunter down in a single mag. If you need to and you've got grenades left, prime your hunter with a grenade. So throw a grenade uh, before you start shooting at him. Chances are that you're going to hit him with a, a frag grenade or a stun grenade and you're going to cause some sort of status effect on him, whether that be he's going to bleed, he's going to be shocked, he's going to be disrupted. Anything that you can do to your hunter can be beneficial uh, in getting him down and getting extracted. But that's all the tips I've got to share with you today. Uh, I hope you do find them useful. Um, I know in my experience and in my survival runs I always I always extract with six survival caches. The hunter kill is never an issue and I always find that each run and perfecting these tips more and more and more. So next time you're in a survival run, try these out. If you find them useful, drop me a comment. Um, if you didn't find them useful or you've got any better tips, leave those in the comments too. Or even better, leave a like or maybe even subscribe. Um, I'll have more videos coming soon. My name is Mikkel. You guys have been amazing and I'll see you next time.